Hi everyone, Aisha with Retro Handhelds. Today I want to talk to you about my experience using SteamOS on the Win 600, whether it's something I would recommend or if you're better off staying on Windows. Now before we get into it though, this isn't going to be a review of the Win 600 itself. We actually already have a video covering that, link will be in the description. Instead, this is going to be just me talking about what it was like using SteamOS, what works, what doesn't, and kind of what to expect if you decide to go with this. So. First thing is the actual user interface is actually very nice. It's easy to get around. Touchscreen works fantastic with it. So do the buttons. So you shouldn't really have any issues with that. For the most part, if you just stay on the game side of things, it's not going to be a problem. We'll get into that a little bit more once we try to set up some other things. But for right now, this is great. The first thing we're going to do here is just launch a game. Excuse me if I am terrible right now. Playing through a little camera is actually harder than I thought it was going to be. What am I doing? Oh man, that is not. Ah, well, that kind of worked out. Anyway, if you see the FPS stay at about 30, even though I have it set. What am I doing? Pause that real quick. Set higher than that. So to get into those settings, though, this is a great segue into that. You're just going to press either the home or windows button unfortunately both buttons do the same thing right now hopefully that is something that's going to get changed in a future update but for right now it's functional so once you press that this is going to pop right up and all you have to do is press the little battery icon right there and go into settings wrong one sorry battery right there there we go and set the fps frame limit unfortunately tdp controls don't work so even if you try to play around with that so i have it set at three and if i set it all the way up to 14 you're gonna see it's not really gonna make a difference so i will show you that real quick let's get back into the game resume game see everything stayed about the same i'm still getting shot anyway this uh no i'm dying okay and wow i actually got that nice Okay, let me run away here real quick and pause this. All right, so you saw TDP didn't really do anything. So unfortunately, that's not really working at this point. But what we can do, actually, if you want smoother gameplay is go back into that menu. Let's turn that off because it's not really doing a whole lot and set the frame limit down to 30. When you set it down to 30, it's going to stay right there. It's not going to move around and you can see that up top. Where are you? Uh, anyway, yeah, as you can see, the frame rate stays at 30. So before I keep embarrassing myself and oh man, I'm going to pause that and get out of the game, which is very easy to do. You just press home again. You're right back here and you can press exit game there. Confirm it. And there we go. We're right back into our library. Now, a lot of games ran like that. A lot of games were about 30 FPS. Even if you try to set it at 60, most just weren't really hitting that, especially for these bigger 3D games. And Borderlands was the same thing. Borderlands, let's see if we can load. Okay, there we go. So we're in game. As you can see, it's at 30 FPS. And if I go ahead and change that back to 60, it's going to get up there. It's going to hit 60, but right now there isn't a lot going on. And once it starts to get busy, it's going to drop back down. Personally, I prefer to leave it at 60. It's going to go up and down. And when it gets a little bit busy, it'll still stay at about 45, which to me, it feels better than 30, but that's going to be a personal preference. I'm dead. There we go. Never mind. So as you saw, the FPS did drop from 60 to 45 and then back up, but it was fairly smooth. So I just prefer to leave it like that. Exit out of this game. Okay, so this one, so you can see, it still hovers about that 40 to 45 range, even if it starts to get a little busy. But this isn't a let's play, so let's get out. As you can see, 45 FPS is another one. I like it that way. I would prefer to leave it like that and uh, then just to run it at 30. But it is going to be, like I said, personal preference. That's now, those games actually ran fairly well. 45 FPS was okay. But unfortunately, some other games, they're just not going to run at all. I'll show you right here with Bioshock Infinite. Now, I will say I was able to get the game running, but the FPS was very, very low. And then unfortunately, next time I tried, it just wouldn't boot. It would 
go right there and crash and this time we're actually getting into the game now it does this for a little while where it looks like it's loading but nothing actually happens so i'm just gonna get an exit out of that and the reason i want to leave this in here is because this is what it's been a lot of times i'll find a game it's running it's going great and then i'll try a newer game and nothing so really you're going to be limited to games from around the early 2010s that's pretty much where you're going to be and indie games indie games are going to work just fine which i'm actually going to boot one up really quick uh, this one is going to run at 60 no problem uh there we go and that's really where one of the areas where this is going to shine is in uh indie games let's see i wanted to show that so those games are going to work great, um, but newer, heavier games, they're just not going to work great. Now, on the Windows side, as I'm sure a lot of you have seen, you can get them running. Um, there's a lot more potential on that side, but there's a little bit more of a setup over there. Now, let's get into some other things here because just native gaming isn't going to be the only thing you can do. There is, you can also load non-Steam games, which I will get into that. The easiest way to do that is going to be with something called the Heroic Launcher, which I actually already added to Steam. So let's go ahead and launch that. We'll play that. Now, some games on this one also don't work. They just will not boot. Um, Others, though, you're going to be able to play them just fine. So now, you will get better performance if you go into desktop mode. Um, this, I'm just going to try. What is going on? Now, see, unfortunately, this will happen sometimes. Sometimes you're going to boot your game and it's going to work just fine. Other times, things are going to happen. For the most part, if you do it from desktop mode, it's not going to be a problem. So we're going to jump over there now. So here's a heroic launcher. We're going to open that. Now, unfortunately, when you go into desktop mode, it's not going to be as controller friendly. So you will have to switch over to the mouse setting. Um, see, on this side, it works just fine. There we go. So getting into the game. Well, anyway, much better on this side of things, uh, which is unfortunate because that means you're going to have to get out of just Steam mode. And that's where the navigation gets a little bit harder but it is an option you do have other options right here so let's quit out of that game now the games that i have here they all worked uh, there was a lot of games that i tried that just will not work unfortunately as you can see there's a few other games in here that i could have downloaded but uh compatibility just wasn't there so i just decided to leave it at the ones that were running and just try those out the last part i want to cover is emulation because who doesn't love emulation? Getting the emulators actually isn't that hard. You just go here into discover up and you're going to search for the emulators. Unfortunately, here's one of the problems I was having is I can't get the keyboard to come up. Even if I do the hotkey combo, it just doesn't work. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I hope that's something they can fix in a future update. For right now, though, what I had to do was plug in a separate keyboard and mouse and that just it wasn't ideal but the option is there once you have that set up you're not really going to need those anymore for what is playable on this so but yeah this is how you get them once you have them downloaded you're going to go ahead and open up steam you're going to add them as a non-steam game and when you go back to gaming mode they're going to be right there easily accessible so let's hop on back over there so now we're going to start with the retroarch the great thing about retroarch is it's very controller friendly so everything you need to navigate it, it's going to be right there just make sure you do set up things before that and you can get into a whole video about just setting up retroarch so we'll leave that for another day but it's really not that hard once you get a general idea I'm not really even going to bother with game boy game boy advance all those other games because they're going to work just fine they're going to run no problem so if you go to NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, uh, SNES, they're all going to run just fine and it's going to be a great experience. The problems start when you start getting into PSP emulation on RetroArch. It's not great. And for some reason, I could not get my Dreamcast games to show up here. So what I had to do was if I go into history, it'll be right there. So I actually had to go into download the, the core as always and then had to go into load content since I already did that and load the game individually. It's just going to be my history. That was actually Sonic Adventure 2. But as you can see, the performance is going to be great. Uh, no slow down, full 60 FPS, have the widescreen patch going. So Dreamcast for the most part is going to work great. I'm sure uh, there's going to be some games that just aren't going to run great on this. 
side of things. And for that, for emulation, if that's all you want it for, that's SteamOS is probably not the way to go. But if you do want to stay on there and have access to a pretty sizable library of retro games, it is, it is an option. It's right there for you to use. Now, I did mention PSP emulation on RetroArch isn't great. Um, that doesn't mean you can't run games. A lot of games are going to be playable, but if you want a better experience, you're going to want to go with standalone PPSSPP emulator. Before I do that and show you uh, performance on it, I'm going to do a quick one here in RetroArch. Now, this is a hard game to emulate, but as you can see at 1x resolution, it's going at 60 FPS. But it doesn't look great. So if you want a better experience, you're gonna want to go with the standalone because you can upscale over there no problem. Two, I believe I got it up to 3x and it was running just fine at 60. So let's go ahead and exit out of this game. Jump over to the standalone PPSSPP emulator. I do want to say that unfortunately N64 was hit or miss. Uh, the games were running fine, but they would crash. So. That's very unfortunate because you would want to be able to keep as much as possible within RetroArch just because of the ease of use. But unfortunately, it looks like N64 is not going to be an option. And let's see if we can get a game loader real quick. And as you can see, the game is now running. Um, I took a couple tries, I crashed about four times. So yeah, N64 is an option. If you run the easier to emulate games, you shouldn't really have a problem. But if you really want to get things like Conquer or 007 GoldenEye running, it's probably not going to be a great experience. Not necessarily because of the gameplay itself, just because of stability. And there we go, the game froze again. So that was N64. That was most of my experience with it. So I would suggest go with a standalone emulator. That is an option. I just really didn't want to go that route. I, I, maybe if I tweak it a little bit more, it'll work out better. But so far, this has been my experience with it. Now, we're actually going to go on to PPSSPP. Now, as you can see over here, um, performance is much better. Solid 60 FPS. It's upscaled, so it looks much better. And I'll show you real quick. But yeah, if you want really, really good PSP, this is definitely the way to go. And it's very capable. So now we're going to get into some GameCube. And performance is actually very surprising. Um, F-Zero ran great as I'm going to show you here in a little bit. So let me just get into that. So as you can see here, F-Zero runs at about 60 with some minor drops here and there, but it's very playable. And after the N64 experience, I had my doubts about GameCube, but PPSSPP kind of made me feel optimistic again. And yeah, it runs great and made of res. Um, now, I'm sure there's going to be some areas where it's going to hit some hitches, and that's to be expected. But yeah, it runs great. Tested a couple other games, and um, Prime ran great too. So if you want to get some GameCube going here, this is completely doable. You can see it's staying at about 60, a couple of drops there to 58, but nothing really noticeable. Now, time to get a uh, no claw grip action for some boost, which you could just map that to uh, L1 since it doesn't really have a using GameCube, and you could just get a per game mapping going and set, uh, which would be Y in this case for GameCube controller over to L1, and that way you have the boost. But I didn't really do that, so I got a claw grip. And oh, there you go, GameCube totally doable. See, that's what I was talking about. So the FPS just dropped, but in the actual game itself, you're not really going to feel it. It's going to be more um, just numbers, basically. So the only problem with GameCube is you don't really have access to the actual emulator settings once you load up the game. So as you can see here, I don't can't really I can exit. I can close on the emulator and that'll take me out. But now I have to open it again, find the find the new game and um, yeah, I can't save state. I can't really do any of that. So that, that's unfortunate. But if you really want to get some GameCube in, the options. Now, the last part I want to show you is PS2. Now, PS2 was probably the most frustrating one because at first I just couldn't get the controls to work. And then when I was about to give up, I don't know where they just started working, which was great. Unfortunately, I can't tell you how I did it because I'm really not sure. Now, as you can see here, I have Dragon Quest 8 running and 
It's going to run mostly at 60. There's some occasional drops to about 55, 58, but for the most part, it stays at 60. Now, I don't know how it's going to be later on in the game because this is a very, very long game and I did not get very far into it. But so far, it looks very promising. Unfortunately, this isn't going to be the case for other games. It might not be the case for most games. There's an option here to access menus. All you have to do is go back into mouse mode, press B, and that's going to bring up the actual menu here. And you can save state and load state. So that's a big plus. But just wish the performance was a little bit better across the board. And I'll show you what I mean. But yeah, here we go. Jack and Daxter is running at about 35 to 40 FPS, which is just not playable. Um, so if you want to just play some RPGs, you're probably going to be just fine. But if you want anything else more action oriented, it's just not going to it's not going to be a great experience. So this has been my experience with SteamOS and it's been hit or miss. I do like some things. I love that it's very controller friendly. So if you want to dock this and you want to just set up a Bluetooth controller on it, play some lighter or older PC titles, you're going to be just fine with it. It's going to work great for that. If you want uh, some indie games, that's going to be awesome too. If you want some lighter emulation, that's going to work great as well. But if you really want to get the most out of this device, this probably isn't the way to go. Like I said, maybe in a future update, it's going to get a lot better. But at this point, um, you're probably better off going with Windows or Batocera. If emulation is your, your main thing, that's probably going to be the best route. Um, anyway, this has been my experience with it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope uh, to see you in some later videos and um, have a great day. Also, if you do want to get one, link will also be in the description. So go through there, help us out, and we appreciate it.